Hey there! In this recording, I'm going to be walking you through how you can use the free annual leave tracker Excel template that is currently available on Vacation Tracker's website. This is a very handy little template, especially when you're a small company, because it really helps you manage all types of leave, especially when it comes to your employees. If you'd like your own version of this for absolutely free, you just need to click on the link in the description and download your copy. Once you do, and once you open the file, you'll be taken right away to this page right here with all the different months listed in the tabs below, as well as the yearly totals. This may seem a little overwhelming at first, but don't you worry, I'm going to be walking you through each step as well as how you can maximize the use of the spreadsheet. Let's start by entering our employee names. Now for the purposes of this video, I've already pre-populated it with just 20 random names, but in your case, do make sure to add your employees that currently work at your company, as well as ensuring that you have enough rows for each employee. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is these absence types and codes on the right hand side. This is just a quick way to mark down what type of leave is being taken, whether it's a vacation or a half day, or if there's jury duty, or even if you're one of those companies that has to keep track of when people are working from home, you have it all here. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is as absences come up, you're gonna to wanna to note them down. So let's say for example, we're in October and we know that Liam wants to take some vacation. So he sends in his request to you and he asks for this week right here. Uh, the week of the seventh so we're going to enter v because it's vacation and we're going to make sure that we mark that down now what we can do right away is ensure that we mark five for deductible because a vacation is a deductible and what we can do as well is we can do a quick sum formula to sum over the leave in these columns so now let's say we were to add one non-deductible for example if liam was working from home on the following Friday, so we put a W, this will automatically add up to six. And you're gonna to wanna to repeat this process for every employee that requests leave or whatever the situation is at your company. The goal here is to ensure that you are constantly filling out this sheet as you get more information or as you get more requests from your current employees. At a certain point, if we cut ahead here to the next month, November, your sheet is going to start to look more and more something like this, where you have certain employees who are taking maternity and paternity leave, uh, sick days that come in obviously the day of, or even jury duty that might appear. All you need to do is once again, ensure that you have the sum formula, calculating the total of the two columns, and it's as simple as dragging and dropping the formula so that it keeps a constant addition. At the end of the year, or even during the year, if you want to take a look at the yearly totals, you can head to this tab right here, and this is what will keep track of the types of vacations being taken by your employees, so you can start to spot some trends. Let's say for the sake of simplicity that all the employees at company XYZ get 20 days of vacation. So we're gonna fill without formatting. Next, what we want to do is look at the total vacation days taken for Olivia. So what we're going to want to do, it might be a little time consuming, but is make sure we select all the vacation days in deductible here, because that's what we're considering in the vacation type. So we're going to make sure we click January, then February, March, April. Make sure you select the right employee as well, May. June, July, August, September, October, November, and lastly, December. As you can see here that only half a day has been taken because most of the months are empty at the moment. And this column right here, which is a little bit hidden, is actually the vacation days remaining. So all we need to do is a simple subtraction to see Olivia has taken 19 and a half days. Now, don't you worry, you can also just drag and drop this formula and you can see the same thing now starting to populate for the air employees. So again, because we didn't fill out the other months, this is what it looks like currently. But again, it gives you a good pulse on who's taking how much vacation and who has how much remaining. So when they do ask you that question, you have that information ready. Now let's take a look at the non-deductible side of this summary. Now you see here, things are just a smidge more complicated, but don't you worry. I'm gonna give you a little tip and trick with formulas to make this easier. 
On the right side, you'll see the breakdown of all the different non-deductible leave types, ranging from family medical leave to work from home. An easy way to do this, obviously, is to keep track of this as time goes on uh, for each employee, but obviously sometimes you forget or things become complicated. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna use a count if formula to count the number of times that code appears. Let's take Amelia Foster, for example, and wanna do her sick leave. So we're gonna look at count if and this formula is essentially going into the section that we are highlighting. So in this case, we're saying, hey, check Amelia Foster in the month of October, has the code S appeared? And then we're gonna repeat that same count if for all of the months. I'm not gonna do all of them because it's a bit time consuming, uh, but again, it is worthwhile. Just make sure you obviously repeat the count if statement for each month and make sure you add them together. So once again, count if we're going to look at the range of Amelia Foster and make sure we highlight that we're looking for the code S. So you'll see here, she has taken three sick days. And if we look, so she had two in December, one in November and none in October. And obviously you want to make sure you extend that formula to all the months available on the table. Next, we're also going to want to make sure we summarize all the absence days. So we can also, we can look at this two ways. We can either look at all the absence days that are non-deductible, or if we feel like we want to keep track of all the absence days that are both deductible and non-deductible, it's as simple as taking that range again and taking, we don't need the sum of all the vacation days taken. That should just about cover the basics when it comes to this annual leave tracking template. Now I do recommend you trying to customize this further to fit your organizational mold as I'm sure there are certain aspects of this that maybe you're not tracking or are not relevant to you. On top of that, as you can tell, I'm no Excel wizard, but if you do have someone who's very comfortable with Excel, I'm sure there's other macros or formulas that you can apply to really cut down a manual entry and save time. If you happen to have any questions whatsoever about the spreadsheet, feel free to leave them down below and we'll respond to them as soon as possible. Or even better yet, if you don't want to deal with spreadsheets whatsoever, I do recommend checking out Vacation Tracker as we have a free trial and it really just simplifies this whole process. Take care.